In this video, I'm going to discuss the opening moves of the board game Arc Nova. If you watch this video through to the end, you should have a pretty good idea of how to start your next game. This video is aimed at beginner to intermediate play, so if you're a grandmaster already, it may not help that much. A lot of people love this game, but I've heard some pretty crazy things about people's first time. They say it took six to eight hours, the pizza delivery had to be called in for a second supply drop, and that their whole strategy was based on a bear icon that never appeared. That's nonsense. The publisher has your back. They have this document online called Arc Nova Starting Hands, and it specifies unrealistically good starting hands and uh, matching final scoring cards. Then it tells you exactly how to play the first round. All you have to do is follow directions and everything will be fine. Did we do that? No, of course not. That's not playing the game at all. That's worse than going to work. No, we all read through the rules and we embarked on a seven hour, four player journey of discovery that left us muddled, intrigued, and enlightened. And that's not even counting that game at Dice Tower West. When I started that game, I didn't even know the rules. Wow, we got killed on that one. You see, if three inexperienced players play Brass Birmingham, they'll get lousy scores, but they'll finish the game in a reasonable amount of time. That's not true in Arc Nova. In Arc Nova, we will keep playing until someone gets a decent, respectable score, no matter how long it takes. But with new players, no one knows how to ring points out of the game's systems. How do you ring points out of this game? In Arc Nova, there are two kinds of victory points. Appeal points, which help you build up your income, and conservation points, which are worth about three times as much, but they don't add to your income. In the early game, you concentrate on building up your appeal by playing animals into enclosures. This also helps get your economy running. This is the part that new players tend to get right. Who doesn't like playing animals? Later in the game, you'll have built up enough animals, or more precisely, animal icons, to play conservation projects and rack up those sweet, sweet conservation points. And by later in the game, I mean the second round. Second round? What do you mean by that? You gain income and regain spent conservation workers during the breaks. The breaks happen after a variable number of turns based on the break track. For me, the second round includes all the turns that happen after the first break, but before the second break. Got it. You'll want to score a conservation project in the second round because you'll get two different kinds of bonuses. First, assuming you're not playing on a beginner board, you'll likely take a second association worker, and then you'll score a couple conservation points, which will allow you to upgrade a card. Why do you want another conservation worker? You start the game with one conservation worker, so you can only visit the association board once between breaks. You want another association worker so that you can visit the association board twice. I don't know, I'd rather just play animals. This board's small and kind of dull. Going there once a turn sounds like enough. You can get a lot of good things on the association board, like partner zoos, partner universities, and most importantly of all, you can score conservation projects. Conservation projects are the most important way that you score conservation points. Ah, right. Those victory points that are worth three times as much as the other victory points. And early in the game, gaining a few conservation points allows you to upgrade one of your cards, which is a great thing to do early on. Only one? How do I upgrade all the others? Partner zoos, partner universities, reputation. Which are all gained on the association board. I'm starting to see why you want to visit that board more than once around. I guess we really do need that extra association worker. Yes, but all of this depends on having enough animal icons to score a conservation project in the second round. So that's the goal of the first round, is to amass enough animal icons to score a conservation project. How do we do that? Well, we either need to play animals with the necessary icons or we have to find those icons by other means. 
If we're trying to play animals, the hardest part will be finding the necessary animals. They both need to have the right icons and be easy to play because we don't have many resources early in the game. Selecting the right starting cards is critical here. The right starting hand of cards will typically have two to four animals that meet some aspect of the available conservation projects or your final scoring card along with a sponsor card and if you are very lucky, a new conservation project. Whoa, partner, that's the kind of answer that only makes sense to someone who already knew the answer. I very much hate to do it, but we're going to have to get specific. I'm gonna take this down another level by showing you how I would respond to certain starting draws. Each game, you start with eight cards. You're allowed to keep four. You also know what the starting base conservation projects are, and you have your starting board. In this case, I've set up ice cream parlors. So let's step through these cards. Elephants is very expensive to play because it has a very large enclosure requirement. It costs a lot of money, and it requires that we upgrade our animals card, something I might not usually do till fairly late in the game. This is an excellent card because it gives you an additional final scoring card. However, we have very small hand limits in our Nova, and you're not going to want to hold this card through the entire game in hopes that you get to play it at the end. I would discard elephants. Ring-tailed lemur is not a bird, nor does it match our continent icons. This is not a great choice for us. Finnick fox, once again, no useful icons. Sun Bear. I really like this card. It gives you an extra association action, but none of the tags are useful to me. Australian Sea Lion. This is a nice card. It has a lot of points on it. It's reasonably expensive to get out, and it requires a partner zoo with Australia. You notice we have Australia as a goal. This is a reasonable choice, although I wish it was easier to play. Koalas. It's a very valuable card. It has requirements that we can meet. It is rather expensive. Eurasian Eagle Owl. The bird icon matches the European icon, matches the card is reasonably priced, and it requires a zoo partner. This is a card we want. Finally, King Vulture. Three bird icons, just to play it. It's a good card. It's going to be very difficult to play. We're probably gonna keep one of these two cards, which are quite difficult to play. I will probably keep King Vulture, because since I already have one bird icon, I have hopes that I could find some more and maybe score the bird's goal at a very high level. How will I play these cards using the board ice cream parlors? In this case, if we cover this space here, we will get a free kiosk. Kiosks are important to developing income early in the game. So I might play a level two enclosure here with the goal of putting my Eurasian Eagle Owl into that enclosure. I would probably put that kiosk here where I can build around it and get a lot of income from it. it will also leave me easy access to this bonus spot. Okay, let's look at another set of cards. This time I have the Silver Lake board, and I'm gonna add another level of detail by considering not just my starting cards, but also my end scoring cards. You get two end scoring cards to consider at the beginning of the game, but you don't have to pick them until someone gets to 10 conservation points. We are looking for species diversity, five different kinds of animal tags, predators, and Europe. For final scoring cards, we have two options. One is to score rock icons, and the other one is to score reputation. You generally pick up a fair amount of reputation during the game without even trying too hard. So, I'm probably leaning toward that card. For the second time in a row, I've drawn all animals. Hopefully we'll start seeing some sponsors cards so we can include them in our analysis. Let's keep it simple. These are the cards we have. These are the tags that play on our available conservation projects. Let's keep those. One way to play this particular combination of cards would be to grab an Asia Zoo early and then play Cinerous Vulture. Then we could score Asia at level two in the second round of play. Following that, we'd have a great start on building up predators to score predators at level four or even level five. Okay, let's look at another set of draws. This time around, we have Africa, primates, reptiles, Final scoring cards are Biodiverse Zoo and Architectural Zoo, which basically gives us points for filling up our board. Let's see who the contestants are. Interestingly, we have a couple different sponsors cards this time. This sponsors card is very difficult to play because we need a level two sponsors card and six reputation before we can play it. This is really an end game card and I won't be choosing it. Native Lizards. 
You gain one extra appeal for each connected rock space. So if you quickly connect four or five rock spaces, that can be pretty valuable. I'll keep this card. That means we have three animals to select. These are the cards we're considering. These tags play directly on conservation projects. We have five useful cards. I exclude Capuchin because with these other four cards, I have a good start at scoring all three base conservation projects. One thing to note, because this is a sponsor's card, we won't have to play an enclosure to place the card down. That makes it a lot easier to get this card out in the first round, along with the very easy to play European Pond Turtle. And we don't have to spend an action to get a partner zoo to play either one. So we can actually score a conservation project before the first break with these two cards. As much as I really want the Panamanian white-faced capuchin, I'm going to have to let it go. Now how would I play these cards if I had the park restaurants board? With park restaurants, I really want to place buildings around this space because they give me additional income at each break. I'm going to play native lizards, but it would be much more fun to play native lizards if I were getting a bonus for having connected rock spaces. One possibility would actually be to build a level four enclosure that I'll use in the second round for this card. I could use my level five build here to place such an enclosure here, which would also allow me to take a card. I have this card in the way, so I might use it to snap something from the display or perhaps to draw three cards and discard one. Instead of going immediately to sponsors, I would play build and place my level one enclosure here. So far, I've spent 10 money, so I still have plenty of money left over to pay for European pond turtles. Now, finally, I can play sponsors at level five, and I'll pick up a few tickets for having connected rock spaces. At this point, I would very likely place European pond turtle into my zoo using my animals card. I'm still not out of money, and I still have an association worker. Note that I have two reptile tags. At this point, I can actually score the reptiles conservation project. What to do next? I might actually build a kiosk here to take advantage of the income from filling a space next to my restaurant and also from having a kiosk next to my level one enclosure. If you don't see the kinds of immediate combinations that I've seen here, it doesn't mean your game is over. All you need to do is really focus on doing an early card draw, for example, or snapping something off the board that really helps you. You have so many opportunities to get new cards and to look at new different types of situations that you really want to keep an open mind and look around a bit. You might also see cards like these in your initial draw. They offer new conservation projects. Some offer new ways to score. Be careful with these cards. Scoring this card at the lowest level doesn't make sense if your opponents can score it at a higher level. Some cards offer points and reputation for an animal and a partner zoo. These cards can allow you to score an early conservation goal while continuing to collect icons or base conservation projects. Finally, some cards allow you to release an animal. This is a good way to score early conservation points, assuming you have an animal you're willing to lose. Wow, that seems like a heck of a lot to think about, and yet I still have a lot of other questions. What if someone takes the partner zoo I need? Play an animal that contributes to another project or draw some cards. Look to get that zoo after the next break. And since you have a free association worker, you might want to grab the university that gives you a larger hand limit. When you start trying to play several strategies at once, you need more cards. What if I can't score a conservation goal in the second round, but my opponents do? Consider using sponsors to accelerate the break so that they can't use their extra association worker and set yourself up for a conservation project in the next round. Wouldn't it work to just play great animals and not worry so much about icons? It's about synergy. Conservation projects are something you get for free because you played the right animals. You like free things, don't you? Should I always go for the university that gives me a larger hand limit? In most games, it's only nice to have. Only keep cards you're going to actually play. As you upgrade your action cards, you get more and more access to the center row. Which action card should I upgrade first? Association, because it allows you to make donations. Early donations are some of the cheapest conservation points in the game. And sometimes you can play two association actions at once, which is a nice trick. Often though, I'll flip build because I'm much more action efficient if I can build two buildings at a time. Petting zoos? They're terrible if you only place one animal in them, but fantastic 
If you place three, there are only 10 petting zoo cards in the deck, and they don't contribute to most conservation projects. I'm afraid we barely even scratched the surface. This is a big beast of a game. Really too much to cover in one video. I love strategy board games, and I'm sure you do too. This one is something special. Have fun. Do something interesting, Turtle. Come on, Turtle, do something interesting. They're not going to do anything don't interesting now that he knows it. Okay, here he goes. Ready? Here he goes. Don't eat rocks, Turtle. There shouldn't be rocks. Get out of the way. Rocks are people too, Turtle. Get out of the way, Turtle. Get out of the way, Turtle. I was eating those rocks.